Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And I've brought you down here to the brook because I just wanted to show you our new bridge. What we're going to do today, I'm going to just explain what happened down here. I've got this new Defender in for a few weeks. There will be going to be a proper video review on it on Harry's Garage. But I just thought, while well, I've got it here. It might be quite fun. Just look at it from a pure farming spec, how the new Defender behaves. And then we're just going to uh, have a look at what other things have been happening on the farm and some of the crops as well. But let's kick off with the bridge. Now I explained, I think, in a previous video that we had a bridge down here and it was just sleepers and they were starting to rot out and it was deemed a bit dangerous if you're on a horse because its ho hoof could go through. So the council very kindly took it out and put this new bridge in. This is it. And it, uh, it had a bit of a test this month because December, the heavens open. We had an incredible amount of rain in December. It's 106 mil on this farm I measured, but 70 odd mil came just before Christmas and it was enough to flood the farm again. It's one of those things we thought the floods were all in, done for in early 2020, but no, there was a sting in the tail for farmers in this area because it flooded again in, at the back end. And uh, this was almost underwater. It had only been in a couple of weeks and the level was right up, full pressure on it. Uh, it was all a bit scary, but it held firm. And the great thing is when you have a flood, it sweeps through. There's a, a tremendous flow of water comes through. And this is sort of mud normally, and it just clears all the silt out. So it's fantastic to look at this clear stream again at the start of winter. I just hope that is it. But yeah, we'll go a bit further down because there's some um, flood defence buns for the village a bit further down. And they got so much water came down, they actually overflowed. So before we get there, I'm going to have a quick look around the Defender. Yeah, slightly daft place to park it. But what I wanted to show you on this Defender is its sort of off-road capability. That's what I was keen to try out on in this particular video. And what gets me about it, it is a very well thought out vehicle for off-roading, which you'd expect from Land Rover and a Defender. Some of the things I really like, you can, you can spec from new proper off-road tyres. And I've got on very well with these and they seem to behave well on the road as well. They're not too noisy and things, but it's sort of clean. There's nothing to snag on. If you look underneath there, we've done some proper wading and things, nothing to catch. Even underneath, there's a sump guard and things like that on it. So it, it has been thought out very well. This is, I think, where it breathes the other side, actually, these vents here. Um, big square mirrors when you look at that. Easy when you get in and out. Yes, it's a bit of a tr struggle on the slope. Inside you've got proper rubber mats and then underneath, yeah, just the sort of rubber plastic, whatever you like to call it. No carpet to be seen anywhere. Really good storage everywhere you look in this car as well. Under there, great big bin. This com this great big bin in there. And then there's that as well. I'm not sure what that is. I think there's a um, charge point you can get potentially that will wireless charge. The slight issue I have here, there's a fabric and leather combination for the upholstery. And you can see already this fabric around the outside, just rain spots getting on it, is starting to stain up. We'll have a look at the interior in a bit more detail when we're driving it, but you can just see the spots of, I think, rain doing that there, which I don't think is really on. I think the, the slight surprise is this car, as you see it, is £81,000. And it's, it's very well having all this plastic and easy to wash out and things. But I just wondered where, where's my money gone? Why haven't I got a slightly posher interior? I don't know if you're... Same in the back. So yeah, rubber mats, plastic underneath. So many charge points back here as well. You're never going to run out of charge points. There's just a sort of utilitarian sort of feel to this car, as you can see. Another nice feature on it is the seats properly fold flat. Um, so it's a full flat floor, we'll have a look at the minute. I think this is a complete nonsense. I'm not sure what I meant to do with it, but I can't get a wellies in it. It's got a cheapo key on it. It's sort of a part of their accessory pack. And the thing, if you look from the side and you look in your rear view mirror, all you see is this, when I really want to see what's behind me, not what that box is doing. Come around the rear, great big towing eyes, full on cast iron things. 
that you can put a rope on instantly you're not going to snap those i think they have a snatch rating of seven or eight tons or something ridiculous badging very confused i find is the, all the models available p400 means it's p for petrol 400 horsepower se is the spec of it but this was a 2020 model year and you can't buy this car in 2021 they've changed all the spec which is a bit strange at the rear well as you can see it's been moving logs it's towed friend out i've got a tow bar on here if i just press that you know lots of whizzies and a tow bar will appear here it comes there so three and a half ton rating on that you actually have to put that other plug in because it's got the continental one but that's quite common in uk cars now we still have the seven pin i'm going to put that one back another nice touch there's actually a proper plug 240 uh, volts there that i actually use for auxiliary lights we're lighting up a woodshed and things but i can see come harvest time we're trying to mend some equipment or something to be able to have floodlights you can plug that in there as well very good again uh plastic all here i'll lift that up what's under there oh there's another little storage area under there there we go oh yeah that's actually huge towing i've never seen one uh, this tractor size that isn't a normal towing eye at all just mad there's a flimsy sort of cover that goes over here i think you'll just see them in use at dealerships and forevermore they'll be wrapped up and shoved in a something at the side loads of charge points everywhere there's 12 volts down here as well the curry hooks are here as well so yeah quick look round. quite a heavy rear door but um that's all part of it we'll have a look i'm not sure why it's doing all the flashing it has a trick rear camera there that actually works as your rear view mirror inside so you either if you've got this all loaded up it uses that camera just to um, have a rear view mirror same thing you just flick between the two which is very clever again final bit is uh, this suspension is on raised proper proper clearance on it um, so yeah you will not snag if you're going to snag this you're it's sort of into tractor territory it's ground clearance it's very good right let's go and have a look at the floods so inside very basic actually if you look down here we've got this sort of one screen here i'll turn it on then we can all see what happens there we go ventilation etc great big bins though loads of places to put things all under here and then like defenders of old there's all this oddment sort of trays here and there and everywhere and if you want to do sort of different sort of off-road modes where you can do that on here so if i go to uh, gravel there we are we're on gravel yes i've selected uh, don't show that again no, i don't need that so anyway that all does that bit and i can now see diff locks and things like that you can get a, also a sliding roof for this this has just got a fixed roof at the moment um, but you can get an actually open sort of canvas roof as well another impressive thing is i've got suspension on high and in sort of Land Rover products of, of old if you had it on high you had the roughest suspension it's like the springs went sort of super firm not so on this one it's actually really quite comfortable even though I've got it right raised right up right just over a week ago this is the field that was completely flooded if you turn around you can just sort of see the tide mark and I took this car through proper depth it, it has a wading ability of 900 mil well we were pretty close to a yeah, 900 mil if not a metre. I could just feel the traction control start to go because the car was starting to float and we came out around here. Staggering how quickly the water then goes down though. But yeah, a proper flood down here from all that rain. Yeah, I'm not going to head across here because I know how boggy this is. I have pulled my son out of here when he's got overexcited and gone in here. But uh, if I was on this, if I just press this, this is a quite a nice little trick it's got on here. It has a wade sensing. I press that when we're in the water. And uh, it actually, you can see what level, you can sort of see the tide mark as the water starts to come up. Very clever. I just want to show you this mirror. So there's my rear view out 
from the rear view mirror out the back. And you see it's a bit cluttered with the seats up, etc. But if I flick a button on here, suddenly I go from normal mirror, where you'll probably see the camera. There we are, yeah, you can see what we see, camera, etc. And then I go to that, and then I've got that view. So then I go into reverse, and you'll see it's just like a TV screen. You can actually see what you're reversing into. It's all very trick, very clever. But I can see that's going to be an absolute boom if you have a trailer on the back or you've got the car fully loaded and you don't know what you're looking at. But there you are, you can do it with that mirror. But it's good, this car, I have to say. If you look at this, I can see the angles we're at here. We're traversing a 20 degree slope, 19 degree. All clever stuff. I can see the diff locks of operating, etc. So yeah, a lot of thought gone into this Defender. From a farmer point of view, I think it does really work. The bit I'm stumbling on is the price point, because it's a lot more than um, Discovery, and it's sort of on par with Range Rover Sport. It just sits below Range Rover, which I wasn't expecting. But it, the ability, having lived with it, I think I might well swap my Range Rover into this because I quite like the, the sheer ability of it and the practicality of it. So it's, it's just, you know, that's what we, we all like the um, Discovery 4 for the same sort of reasons. And it's like a, one of those. It's very interesting. It's disruptive in the market is how I would describe this car at the price point. The bit I don't like is this engine, the engine specs is odd. This is P400, so that means it's 400 horsepower, straight six petrol, mild hybrid. It gets complicated, the actual mechanicals of it, because it's actually got an electric supercharge for low rev uh, power, and then twin turbos to add the, the top up, and the result is 18 mpg, so really not good. I am told from the engineers, the pick of the range is actually the P300 diesel, which is a straight six diesel, also got the supercharger and twin turbo. Um, that's not quite out yet, but that would be the one. Or the other one you could go through is the P400 plug in hybrid. Honestly, you can get lost in the configurator with this car. I just feel the four pop diesels just don't like, they lack something if you're towing. The car is 2.3 tons. Um, if you power it and you're trying to tow, with a two litre highly tuned uh, diesel doesn't seem quite right to me. I think the straight six is the better choice. Final, final point, the 90 and 110 split is quite interesting. In this spec is 4,000 more to have the 110. Not much of a premium. Um, you gain 100 kilos, but you get a lot of practicality, I think, with the 110. I thought I wanted the 90, but they've, overdone the rear seating to the detriment of the rear sort of hatch compartment. You've got a dog, you've suddenly got this weird step, it's sort of not very well thought out. You, you say you want to fold the seats down and it, you, you end up with this different lever, um, level boot floor that a dog is really not going to like. You can go for the commercial and then obviously that disappears but yeah the 90 is a bit compromised from a farmer point of view because of the way they've done the rear seats. So I think the 110 is the choice vehicle. Anyway, enough of this. This is meant to be a farming channel. So let's go back and have a look at some feels of, well, oilseed rake to begin with. Oilseed rake there, winter wheat there. Now, from a farming point of view, you get to, well, 1st of January today. It's the amount of upfront cost with oilseed rake. To get this crop to this stage, I have spent in total 188 pounds 25p per hectare so i've got 40 hectares it's seven and a half thousand pounds or thereabouts why is it so expensive compared to the wheat which is over there we're going to have a look at in a moment and on that field i've spent 71 pounds a hectare so so over three times as much with oilseed rate to get it to this stage so why did it end up being so expensive this this oilseed rate well the seed that 
a hybrid seed which has all this increased vigour came in from Switzerland, £235 a bag for three hectares, £78 a hectare. A flea beetle spray with £8 a hectare. Volunteers, which is the, the seeds that come out the back of the combine, haven't actually been all the wheat that wasn't combined, £6 a hectare. And then the big spend is the um, general herbicide that should get it right through to harvest, £57 a hectare, that cost, that weed killer. We put a trace element um, on as well, remember with that slight colour in the leaf, £12.74 and a fungicide to control foma, which is a sort of leaf spot we saw on the leaf, that was £25. So all told, that's why it's so expensive. While the wheat, we just got the seed, had it dressed out by CYO, chucked it in the ground, that's it. It's why all farmers sort of limit their exposure to oilseed rape because it's a great break crop, but it's so expensive to grow and you don't know if it's going to get established, etc. This is just coming through. We're just going to get through the winter and then it will then get its fertiliser and it will grow up, etc. So I'm quite pleased with how the rape's looking generally. Apart from the bit behind you, this got completely flooded out this corner and it's really, I'm afraid, knocked the rape back a bit. But uh, that is something as 2020 just keeps on giving, you know, we didn't expect these floods and all crops would die uh, in that sort of situation. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. But the wheat's looking spectacular. I'll leave that here. Come and have a look, quick look in here. Well, it was minus five last night and you can sort of tell we've had several frosts now. But the wheat can cope with that and you actually need it from a vernalisation point of view. But if you look at this wheat, this is home saved wheat that's gone straight into this ground and has not been touched. I've rolled it, has not been touched. You can see how healthy it looks. It's all tillered out, very little weed pressure coming. There's odd bits of weed. It had no weed killer on it at all in here. It's just this field hasn't got something called black grass. This was linseed last year, so this is my first wheat. But it's, it's what we're trying to achieve now is to get to this stage with a minimal spend. So there is a, that one pass Claydon hybrid drill straight in behind the combine and roll and this is what you end up with. So yeah, I'm really chuffed with this. I just hope now I've got to get it through. But as I said on the previous video, it's like a die is cast. Once you get to this stage, you need a real serious weather event to stop this yielding pretty well, as we've had with those droughts the last couple of years. So there you go. Saw lots going on for a winter period, what with the floods um, and the snow and it, everything. Brexit sorted now, it looks as though we're going to be able to trade with Europe, which is great news for all farmers. We don't quite know what the future holds, I'm sure they'll make their mind up, but they've had quite a lot on their plates this recent so I can understand why they've got a little behind on it. But so far, at the moment, I'm really looking forward to Harvest 2021. Hope you enjoy this video, if you have, well, Keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming on very soon.